Happy Mother's Day, everyone. I'm so glad that you could join me today as we dive into God's Word and talk a little bit about um, moms and what it is to be a mom and uh, to be the child of a mom. And hopefully that you can bring something from it to apply to your life, no matter what your station in life. I realize that this uh, Mother's Day is very different because we're restricted in our gatherings and uh, aren't always able to get together uh, with our mom, even if they live in the same town. So my prayers are with you that uh, you are able to reflect upon what, what uh, reflect on your mom and uh, your relationship and maybe your children and your relationship with them. I have a little story I want to tell you, and it's about a guy named Fred, and he was 32 years old, and he was still single. And one day a friend asked him, he said, Fred, like, man, why aren't you married? Can't you find a woman who will be a good wife? Fred, Fred replied, actually, I found many women I wanted to marry, but when I bring them home to meet my parents, my mother doesn't like them. His friend thinks for a moment and said, I've got the perfect solution. Just find a girl who's just like your mom. A few months later, they meet again, and his friend says, Did you find the perfect girl? Did your mother like her? With a frown on his face, Fred answers, Yes, I found the perfect girl. She was just like my mother. You were right. My mother liked her very much. The friend says, Well, then, Fred, what's the problem? To which Fred replied, My father doesn't like her. My goodness, there's always something, isn't there? Well, Today I want to, I'm going to share a few scriptures with you, um, and I want to start with one that is um, often read when it's talking about women or wives and mothers, and it's found in Proverbs 31, and I'm starting at verse 35, or sorry, verse 25. She is clothed with strength and dignity, and she laughs without fear of the future. When she speaks, her words are wise, and she gives instructions with kindness. She carefully watches everything in her household and suffers nothing from laziness. Her children stand and bless her. Her husband praises her. There are many virtuous and capable women in the world, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, and beauty does not last but a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. Reward her for all she has done. Let her deeds publicly declare her praise. It sure sounds like a tall order, doesn't it? We can all be well-intentioned, but being a parent is a difficult task for sure, and being a spouse. You know, one of the most important goals that I had in life was to be a mother. And after I met Will and we decided we wanted to start a family, I went to my family doctor and I told him that I wanted to conceive in March and to have the baby in December because Will wanted to have a baby close to his birthday. Well, my doctor laughed at me. Can you imagine? Well, guess what? I got pregnant in March and our due date was December the 10th. Will thought that was perfect because the baby would probably be late and his birthday's the 18th, so it would all work out well. Needless to say, we were over the moon with joy. And yet I had morning sickness. Uh, morning, noon, dinner, and evening sickness. I was sick all the time for five months. But you know something? It was worth every moment to me. Being sick um, showed me that I was pregnant, that there was something going on in my body. And as the sickness passed, and as uh, I felt the baby begin to move and stretch, um, I just loved the experience of becoming a mother. And uh, yes, it did come with, with its challenges. But I never resented a moment. I remember when I worked in obstetrics and gynecology, there was a lady that came up and she was overdue in her pregnancy. 
and she, uh, I was taking her to her room to be examined, and I said to her, oh, you must be so excited. Is it a boy or a girl, or do you know? And she said, I don't care if it's a monkey. Just get this baby out of me. And, of course, I laughed to kill myself, and I never forgot what she said. But for us, it was a little different. On November 20th of 1982, my sister-in-law, those of you who go to Shiloh know her very well, Muriel, and I took their daughter, Erin, to the Santa Claus Parade in Kingston. And we were having a great time. At that time, my husband's business was on Berry Street, and we stood on the corner, and I was running back and forth to the shop because it was a Saturday and they were working, and we were just having a great time. That day I came home, and I bustled around, and I put all the baby's clothes away, and made dinner, and uh, settled in for the evening. I remember I even uh, painted my nails a bright, bright, bright red. Um, they look great. Uh, but we had the evening come, and I was watching Jaws. Uh, two things I did wrong that night is I watched Jaws, and then Will uh, jumped out from behind a corner and scared the life out of me. But anyway, Muriel and Bob had some visitors, his, uh, Bob's brother and sister-in-law, and they, we were saying goodbye to them, and they said to Will and I, well, I'll just think you could even have the baby tonight. And we both said emphatically, any night but tonight, we're too tired. Well, we went to bed that night, and at 3.30 in the morning, my eyes opened, and that was the time that I always woke up. Um, and I got up to do my nightly bathroom trip, and I got up and, up and I was just not feeling quite myself. And um, so I ran a bath, and I got in the bathtub, because when you're pregnant, they tell you that if you have Braxton Hicks contractions, which are, you know, early contractions or getting your body ready for delivery, to uh, just jump in the bathtub. So that's what I decided to do. I jumped in the bathtub. And I got in there, and I couldn't get out. So I yelled for Will to get up. And at that time, Bob and Muriel lived in an apartment over uh, above our home. And uh, Will got up, and he went and said to Bob and Muriel and his mom, who was living with them at the time, um, we're going to go to the hospital because, you know, I think, I think maybe we're getting close. So Muriel said, Bob, why don't you drive them? So Bob came down, and, and uh, Muriel came down, and she um, was trying to help me get dressed because I was in quite a bit of distress. Anyway, they got me to the car. Got in the back, I got in the back seat of the car. Bob and Will were in the front. And as we headed from Millhaven, where we lived at the time, toward Kingston, um, my contractions were coming very, very fast. And uh, all of a sudden, I had the sensation that I needed to push. And I said, I have to push. And Will said, don't you push. And of course, I did. Well, baby's head appeared um, by what was then Collins Bay Marina. And lo and behold, his body came out at Front Neck Secondary School, our first child born in the car. We figured it was about... Um, 40 minutes or less from the time that I got up until the baby came, which is not uh, usual for first delivery. We were in shock because it wasn't supposed to happen that way. Um, I think it was probably almost a minute before we looked to see whether we had a baby boy or a baby girl, and we had uh, our first son. And we figured it was about four 10 that he was born because at 420 I was on our labor and delivery floor getting stitched up after delivery. Nothing was the way I expected it to be. Being a mother has been nothing that I expected it to be. And for those of you who may be looking forward to parenthood, I challenge you to throw out all of those expectations that you may have just throw them out the window because every child is different. Um, and what works for one won't necessarily work for the other. 
I had to eat a lot of words about what I said about parenting over the years and the lessons that I've learned. You know, there were days of incredible joy and long nights of tears and frustration. But I was so thankful to have kids that were pretty good. But I'm telling you, they still were not without giving us worry and challenge. Now we are with a parent of three, um, Blake, Trent, and Blair, our daughter. And we have five lovely little girls as grandchildren. Five granddaughters, can you imagine? Was it hard at times? Absolutely it was hard. Was it worth it? Above and beyond anything I could ask or imagine. I love being a mom. I love being a parent. And in case you haven't noticed, I'm deeply, deeply in love with my children and grandchildren. And my role as wife and mother is one of the greatest joys of my life. Now in telling you all of this, and I think this is the first time I've shared my birth story with you, um, I want you to think about a few things. I want you to think about if, if you have children or children that you've loved in your life, how with all of this love that you have for them, to what degree would you go to to protect them? No, they're not perfect. And yes, they will let you down at times. But th does that change the depth of your love for them? Even in spite of disappointment and heartbreak, that love remains the same. I know I would gladly give my life for any one of my children or grandchildren. I wouldn't even have to think a moment about it. I would just do it. Matthew 6 uh, is the middle chapter of the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus talks about how much God loves us. About when we worry and we stew about things at times. God gave his very best for us through his son Jesus Christ. He was giving up his own son so that we could spend eternity with him. And I want to read to you from Matthew 6. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all of your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't worry or make their clothing, yet Solomon in all of his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for the wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have such little faith? So don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. You see, God knows we're not perfect. He knows we worry. We worry about our children. We worry about our finances. We worry about when things go wrong and when we can't make it right, we worry. But God is showing us through his very nature that he cares for you. And my challenge for us all today is to recognize and realize that on this Mother's Day, when we think about relationships, some of them healthy, some not so much. 
But as we think about them, I, I realize all relationships are complicated. Even good ones are complicated. Some of you may have had wonderful mothers, and yet others have struggled in their relationship, maybe even with abuse. All of us have experiences with dis dysfunction, and some carry significant scars from that. I know I was far from a perfect parent. I made a lot of mistakes. And sometimes I wish I could go back and do it over again, knowing what I have done wrong and to right those wrongs. I thank God that he is forgiving and that he gives us opportunities to reconcile through forgiveness given and received. I also realize that sometimes it's not healthy to reconcile in very abusive relationships, but you can still forgive. The word of God says forgiven Forgive as you have been forgiven. We need to remember that. I challenge you today that if there's brokenness, give it to God and watch him work. We have found many, many times that in our Shiloh family, when people are dealing with broken relationships and they bring them to the Lord and they lay them at his feet and we pray as the body of Christ that he has brought many broken and dysfunctional relationships and healed them. He's restored them. And seeing that kind of healing be possible when we thought it was impossible has affirmed to us as the body that nothing is impossible with God. On this Mother's Day, I don't know where you stand. Sometimes when we have parents who aren't that great, it's pretty hard for us to trust a God that we call Father. It's hard to surrender our lives and our, um, our relationship to him. But he is a perfect God. He's a perfect father. And he doesn't make mistakes. He didn't make a mistake when he made you. He created you for relationship with him. But that relationship comes when we surrender our lives to Jesus Christ. That we ask for forgiveness of our sin. And embrace the love that God has for us. Today, if you're feeling hopeless, I hope that you will find hope. If you're feeling broken, I hope you will find healing. When I was uh, researching for my message today, I found a beautiful prayer that I want to close with for mothers. So will you pray with me? Loving God, we give thanks today for mothers. Thank you for mothers who gave birth to us and for women who have treated us as their own children. You teach us how to be good mothers, cherishing and protecting the children among us. Help us mother, love, help us mother lovingly, fairly, wisely, and with great joy. Help us to raise our children to be the people that they are born to be. We need your comfort here today, God, because some are missing mothers and some are missing children. Some are parted by distance or death. Comfort those who have given up their child for adoption or those who chose not to give birth and had an abortion. Comfort those who long to be biological mothers and could not. We pray for those whose mothers have disappointed them. We ask for grace in relationships where there is pain and bitterness. For healing in relationships where there is abuse and violence. Help our Shiloh congregation be a space where people can feel mothered, their gifts and talents appreciated and nurtured. Finally, we pray today for mothers around the world, mothers who cannot feed their children, mothers who are homeless or without a homeland, 
mothers who must teach their children about the danger of bombs and bullets. Help us create a world where mothers can raise their children in peace and plenty. God our Father, you created us to be mothers who came as a child and had a mother. Oh God, you love us with a sweeter and a deeper love than we have ever known. We pray you will hear our prayer this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Life can be un unpredictable, just as this week has been crazy unpredictable. We've gone from really beautiful temperatures last week to freezing cold and snow and hail and uh, sun one moment and craziness the next. But the one thing I'm thankful for is that our God is unchanging. His love is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so as you go about this week, I pray that you will go with the strength that can be given you through the love of our, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Know that his strength is enough, that his grace is sufficient. So be blessed, love him, and make his love known. Amen? Amen. <laughs>